Some people in Haiti actually look at Papa Doc and Baby Doc regime from 1958 to 1986, 28-year rule, uh, military, totalitarian, dictatorial rule, uh, where uh, political enemies were kidnapped in the middle of the night, Haitian, dead body Haitians, uh, the organs were being sold international places, they were stealing money from it, there was a cult of voodoo, a bunch of uh, weird, insane stuff. Some people like... They look at Papa Doc and Baby Doc with a degree of nostalgia of the good old days. Um, when America invaded Iraq, there was no water or electric, and a lot of people were dying. And so when they invade Iraq, a lot of people, a lot of Iraqis were saying, we want Saddam Hussein back. When Saddam Hussein was here, we had water. When Saddam Hussein was here, we had electricity, and there weren't so many dead people. He was a tyrant. He killed people, but he didn't, you know, destroy as many um, uh, people as America had done. So, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, political instability can have people clamoring for an iron-fisted strongman to come up and kind of take control of the whole thing. Uh, it happened with the French Revolution. The French Revolution, you know, is one of the uh, starkest revolutions ever. Chopped off the king's head. You know, like how many revolutions have you heard that actually? you know, chops off their heads and kills them. The Mubarak, they put him in a cage, but um, I guess there's assassinations and coup d'etat, but this was like brought before a tribunal and then they had done it, um, you know, with the guillotine because it was a great equalizer. Uh, so the French Revolution, there's a bunch of chaos right afterwards and then Napoleon kind of takes up the arm and then he fucks up the entire revolution and brings it back to one-man dictatorship. Hitler, there was a lot of chaos that was going on in Germany's time, and Hitler was popularly elected. So what was going on in Germany that uh, the Germans would popularly elect a Hitler? The Germans wanted a Hitler, you know, instability. People, you know, they, they have a nostalgia. They need someone strong to kind of take take charge and to say what, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Um, so the same thing with Papa Doc and Baby Doc. Uh, right now, there's you know there's cholera and typhoid and poverty. Kidnapping is on the rise um, in Haiti. So there's a, a, a lot of issues that are going on. It it seems stable to me. So I don't want to say political instability, but there are um, a lot of issues that's going on with Haiti right now. And uh, even Papa or Baby Doc had said in court, "What have you all done to my country? What have you done to it?" Um, as if you know. Uh, the, the uh, people in power had ruined this country. I would say the hurricane and the earthquake had really a lot to do with um, the, the, the chaos. Uh, but again, you know, people look back at Papa Doc and Baby Doc with some sort of nostalgia, and I don't fucking get it. It doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. This motherfucker is so fucking evil. He killed 30,000 Haitians, the Tom Tom Makut. He would just fucking steal them out in the middle of the night. Right now, Baby Doc is being put on trial for human rights abuses, and he did abuse human rights. He took on the Tom Tom Makut, and he carried it on out. So, uh, Papa Doc and Baby Doc, they were oppressive. They killed people. They sold um, Haitians' organs internationally. Um, he was into voodoo. He killed all the black dogs because he thought that um, uh, one of his uh, <laughs> one of his ex ministers had turned into a black dog. One of his ex ministers that was trying to overthrow him had turned into a black dog. Uh, so, so Papa Doc, right? Papa Doc, he was speaking the nationalist rhetoric. Papa Doc was in power from '58 to '71. When he dies in '71. So the entire 1960s is Papa Doc's in Haiti. 1960s when we have all the unrest, uh, the anti-war movement, black power movement, women's rights movement, um, you know, a lot of movements that were going on, environmental movement, consumer rights movement. In the 1960s, there was a lot of unrest here. And he took the black nationalist rhetoric and said that we're black people here in Haiti, the mulatto elite, which is the mixed people, brown, light-skinned people, um, uh, the mulatto elites controlling the majority of the black people, and why is that? That should not be. Come on, black people, we need to stand up and we need to do something about it. And, you know, uh, I guess black people really took to that, and um, uh, which is unfortunate for the mulattoes afterwards, uh, because he would go into um, the city of Jeremiah, and he killed lots of mulatto uh, mulatto families in Jeremiah. Babies and paralyzed elderly were left for dead in the street for everybody to see. So, um, Papa Doc is a Baron Semedi, a Huga, a Mambo. He's a voodoo man. He's a voodoo priest. He instituted voodoo as the national religion. So, there's, you know, um, no separation between church and state. 
He, uh, he used populist rhetoric. He was a union labor organizer. He was a doctor, so, you know, it sounds like he's got humble origins. His rise to power is somewhat remarkable. The, uh, the elites had chosen him, so they allowed him to win the election, right? And then after he'd won the election, um, the elites thought that they could control him because he was the little doctor. But when the little doctor got into power, he did as the fuck as he pleased. So he played the game, and then once he got the power, he, he was the man, and he realized that he was the man. So, um, he wins the 1958 election. Daniel Fignoli was exiled, so he didn't even have all the competition there. He became president. Papa Doc rules from 1958 to 1971, and all the 60s. 1964, Papa Doc declares himself Haitian president for life. So, president for life. <laughs> all right, it was actually a referendum. It was a, a so-called election. So like Adolf Hitler, Papa Doc, he hated communists so much he was willing to murder them in cold blood. Papa Doc took a page from Joseph McCarthy and he had his own red scare, fuck the communists, right? Which is why Americans actually loved um, uh, Papa Doc and Baby Doc since they were against communism and Cuba was right next door with all their socialist talk and their, you know, care about poor fucking bullshit and you know, Americans are so scared of an idea they, they want to murder anybody that holds that idea. As if that, you know, makes any sense. So Papa Doc hated the mulattoes. He used the black nationalist rhetoric. And um, yeah, he, uh, he forced Louis de Joey, a mulatto industrialist, and all of his Haitian supporters into exile. So he pushes all of the mulatto industrial, the Louis de Joey and all of his supporters out of the country. Or he just straight up kills him in Jeremy. And Jeremy, Papa Doc kills lots of babies and elderly um, and he leaves him for dead in the street for everybody to see. Duvier also expelled all the progressive form board Catholic bishops. So he was against liberation theology. Papa Doc would have exiled Aristide, possibly, since he was a progressive priest. And he was against, you know, uh, being progressive. But it's weird. He's a union organizer, so he came from humble beginnings and just, you know, that power just goes to your head. The precious the precious power. So the United States government was cozy with the Duviers. The uh, wow, um, you know, he was killing thirty thousand Haitians and pushing them all out of the country and kidnapping them in the middle of the night. And the Tantan Macoutes were not paid. They were the Tantan Macoutes had to find their own money. And the way they found their own money was through bribery. You better do as I say or give me some money. And um, um, so that's coercion too. Do as I say or give me money. And there's also um, extortion, right? So uh, they had to find their own money, is um, you know, is is how they got paid. So that would encourage more crime and incur uh, uh, more criminality. So the United States government was cozy with the Papa Baby Docs. Uh, American government doesn't really care for democracy or human rights. Uh, from the 70s to the 87, United States assistance to Haiti actually grew. Since the Duviers were able to create an ordered society, it could allow for business interests to grow. The United States could give a fuck less about how atrocious their atrocities were. The Duviers offered a controlled and orderly Haiti, and that inspired business to settle and profit from the misery of the Haitian people. Uh, Republicans Dwight D. Eisenhower, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, and Ronald Reagan loved the Duviers, uh, most especially for their strong anti-communist stands. Uh, only Democrats, John F. Kennedy and Jimmy Carter, had a uh, significant problem with the Duviers, and eventually Ronald Reagan, um, but that was because he got, uh, he had been caught with his pants down with the Iran-Contra scandal, where he's dealing with Iran, he's getting money and guns from Iran, uh, so we could fight the, um, the, uh, the, the freedom revolutionary fighters in Nicaragua. So, this is another example of Uncle Sam fucking stopping a goddamn fucking popular revolution. Uh, Uncle Sam stopped the fucking Mexico Revolution, Woodrow Wilson's invading Veracruz during the Mexican Revolution, um, Thomas Jefferson is sending money to France for the Hades Revolution, um, and even our own revolution, we're killing a bunch of Indians, so <coughs> I think the American Revolution was kind of a, a fluke, and it wasn't real, and we're not revolutionaries, we don't really believe in revolution. Uh, we have an orderly process, so whenever you get a new leadership, that's that's revolution, and a new constitution is revolution. So, um, but they don't really say a revolution. Anyways, so 
Um, the Duvier's offered a controlled and orderly Haiti that inspired business to settle and profit off the misery of the Haitian people. It gives them cheap labor, access to raw goods, um, and you know, uh, uh, laissez-faire capitalism, just free domain to do as they please. And as long as there's an orderly society, they knew they could make money, the people would invest there. So the... Um, Eventually, you know, Ronald Reagan does kick out uh, Oliver North, the pose of Baby Doc in 86. Um, but uh, up until then, Eisenhower, Nixon, Ford, Ronald Reagan, they were, they were in favor of Dubier because of the anti-communism. He was anti-communist. Cuba might, you know, fall. Um, you know, the Cuban regime of Fidel Castro, uh, Ruse. And because the United States feared the domino effect that the rest of the Caribbean could become communism, the, uh, the United States, uh, instead of uh, exerting pressure on the government of Haiti, the United States um, uh, allows them to go and they finance it. They, you know, so they, they, they finance it. They allow them to continue. So like Mubarak, right, for 30 years, uh, the United States was back in Mubarak until they, they quit backing them. Uh, until the people turned against him. So Jimmy Carter didn't like the the Papa Baby Docs. JFK criticized the lack of democracy in Haiti. And this this totally, you know, uh, Papa Doc liked Eisenhower's support of his country and what he was doing. Uh, but when JFK got into town and he started criticizing his democracy, he didn't like that too much. So when he said that, well, I can't give you any money because there's no democracy, immediately Papa Doc throws an election. He rewrites the Constitution, then he runs a slate of candidates for the top government position under his name. So he has all these candidates, and if you vote for him, then you vote for his candidates. Um, and he did this two years before his term was actually supposed to ex uh, expire, so he did it two years before the election should have happened at the end of his term. Papa Doc was elected by 1.3 million people, which is out of the 1 million eligible voters. The official count was one point. There are 1,320,748 votes for Duvier and zero against. So Papa Doc gets 1.3 million votes and he gets none, zero. He gets none, uh, uh, not, no votes for the opposition. So you're telling me 1.3 million people go into the voting booth and not one single motherfucker voted for the opposition, not one person? Was there an opposition? Was there anybody else to vote for? Was there a gun to people's head when they went to the polling station? Was it all just rigged? Was there some sort of process that people actually go to the polls and vote for, you know, a non-choice? Um, but he did that to show that there is democracy. We did vote. Uh, you know, the Haitians voted here, so give us our money, America. Papa Doc Duvier later claimed, uh, because of Kennedy's, you know, uh, criticism, Papa Doc says that John F. Kennedy had got assassinated because of a voodoo curse he had put on. So Papa Doc is voodoo, voodoo, puts a voodoo curse on JFK. Tells JFK, uh, you know, um, uh, because you're against me, I have cursed you. And then that's, that's why, uh, you know, uh, JFK got blown away. He also, Papa Doc, because of his voodoo, right? Papa Doc sends an envoy to go to JFK's uh, cemetery site to collect the air around the cemetery, so that way Papa Doc can control JFK's soul. That's what, that's voodoo, you know. You gotta control his soul, so you gotta take the air all around <laughs> Kennedy's grave, and then you own his soul. In 1963, Papa Doc had a heart attack, and a guy named Barbot. Barbot was temporarily installed as president because there was no president, but Papa Doc had a heart attack. He was uh, unconscious. Eventually, Papa Doc gains consciousness, and the paranoid Papa Doc thought that Barbot was trying to take his position, his place as president. So he throws Barbot into prison. April of 1963, Papa Doc releases Barbot from prison. Barbot immediately starts on a plot to remove Dubier from office by kidnapping Papa Doc's children. <coughs> The plot did not succeed, and Duvier subsequently ordered a massive search for Barbot and his fellow conspirators. During the search, Papa Doc had heard that Barbot had transformed himself into a black dog. Papa Doc is like, we can't find Barbot. I've heard this story. Barbot's turned himself into a black dog. He's a black dog. I don't know where he's at. 
Someone says he's a black dog. I believe in voodoo, so I believe, you know, in insane shit. And so since I believe in insane shit, I believe he's a black dog. So, of course, logically, what would anyone else do? But Papa Doc orders every black dog in Haiti to be exterminated. Kill all the black dogs. So, you know, they're killing all these black dogs. And then later on, they found out that Barbot wasn't a black dog. He was still a human. And um, and he was shot to death by the Tauntaun Makuts in July 1963. And then Papa Doc kept Barbot's head, um, you know, because cause that's, that's what voodoo do. You, you kill them, you keep their heads. 